Hello and welcome to today's painting demonstration. I'm going to be going over how to paint this alpine meadow scene that I have laid out a little bit different from the reference photo. I have that reference photo available for you in the art community discord and the link for that is in the description of the video below. So I've composed this scene with the rule of thirds, so putting major points of interest at a third of the painting, keeping the central focal point towards the middle with light coming in from the left. So this is what your eye is going to be doing. And these are some small compositional notes that I gave myself. So I'm going to put this up here for my reference and I'm going to start with the underpainting that's going to be in a warm color. Burnt Sienna is what I'm using today. The paintbrush that I'm using right now is a very pliable watercolor to watercolor acrylic brush. It's a large filbert or an oval wash. So I'm going to put in the dark values first and I'm going to pay very close attention to my reference photo and the pencil marks that I've put down for myself. I want to do the dark values first because the light values can just wash right over the top. So it's going to save myself quite a bit of time. These trees lighten up a little bit coming out to the corner. So I'm just going to push the paint around a little bit more and not pick up any more to make that just a little bit lighter. This tree coming towards the middle is going to be the darkest. I'm not being extraordinarily particular with where the branches are coming out. I just want the underpainting to represent the correct values. Okay, moving over to the trees on the right, which are going to be a bit lighter, just a bit. I'm going to use water to lighten up the color of the paint. Now I'm coming down into the grass. With that medium value. Okay, so the mountain is lighter value than the trees below it, and you can tell that since I already have the darker values down, I can just go right over the top and cover up those spaces and still tell what's going on. Just adding a little bit more water to lighten that paint up more. And I'm going to touch around those billowy clouds that are on the top of the mountain. And that's pretty much it for our underpainting.
you know, I might, and I've been doing this lately since moving over to Burnt Sienna for underpainting, is in the lightest areas, just adding a very light wash of cadmium yellow light. Just adding some brightness and interest to those lightest values. Nice goldy warm color. There, that's that's lovely. Now we'll call it good. I'm gonna put the filbert away. We're not gonna need him anymore. Now I'm gonna mix some paint. The sky is going to be a mixture of cerulean blue and titanium white. So I'm gonna go 50-50 on each of those colors. And then to one side, it's gonna be a little bit darker. And then on the left side, it's going to be a lot lighter. Mountain color is going to be mostly cerulean blue. And then I'm going to pick up some of that burnt sienna. And that's going to mute that blue quite a bit. I'm going to scoop that up into the same spot. That's going to be our background mountain with just a couple of light points on it. And then we'll be needing a range of greens to pull from. So our darkest green is going to consist of ultramarine blue and sienna. That's going to be our absolute darkest value right there. Mixing a lot of it because I'm going to make lighter versions. I'm going to mix that up into a pile. And then coming off the side of it, I'm going to add cadmium yellow light. It should give us a earthy green. There we are. All right, now I'm going to grab some cerulean blue and that cadmium yellow, and I'm going to mix a medium green. and then a halfway color between that earthy green and the medium. That's kind of like a St. Patrick's Day green. And then I'm gonna add some white here at the top. That's gonna make it less muted and more sagey. There's our sagey color. And then to the top of that, I'm gonna make a green with some cadmium yellow out of that sage. It's gonna give us a bright spring green. Okay, there we go. I think that's all the colors that we're gonna to need to paint this piece, but we'll see. We can always add, and I tend to mix colors again because I run out, but that's fine. So, okay, grab your filbert brush. And I'm going to start with our darkest sky cerulean blue and white mixture and it's going to be towards the upper corners. I'd like to make the corners of my painting just a little bit darker than the interior. Keeping your eye in the composition hopefully. 
As I move in, I'm going to pick up lighter shades of blue and blend them back into the dark. I can just barely make out the cloud shapes that I have, which is fine. I'd rather have it that way than have pencil marks that I need to cover. But I'm going to pay attention to my thumbnail for guidance. Using very similar brush strokes, I want to make sure that the gradient is, it doesn't have to be necessarily smooth, but that the brush strokes that are used to blend are, they're cohesive. I actually quite like seeing brush strokes in my paintings. Okay, so now for these puffy clouds, I'm just going to grab straight titanium white and I am going to put down some billowy brush strokes. I'm going to be very intentional with the way I put down this paint because I don't want to overwork it. I'm going to extend the cloud shapes up into the sky. And if you're worried about the clouds not being quite o as opaque as you would like them, we can come back for round two. Okay, that's fine for now gonna lose some of that white paint on the filbert brush and I'm gonna pick up the color that we have for our background mountain and I think since there's just one of this color I'm gonna blend it just a little bit with the sky blue to get a lighter version a lighter version that's gonna go on the mountain that is facing the Sun the sun side of this mountain here should be a little bit lighter than the rest of it. I'm going to drag that down over the tree shapes a bit. Not enough to lose the form, but enough to where if we leave some airiness in the branches, which we will be, that it won't reveal too much underpainting. Okay, now I'm picking up that darker background, background mountain color that was mixed out of the cerulean blue and just a touch of the sienna. Just softly blending it into the lighter color.
Okay, I'm bringing that color down and I'm trying to pay attention to where I have trees marked out. The light trees don't have much pencil indicating where they are. Okay, so I want to put a little bit of lightness on this mountain as if there is a field or something on it that's getting hit by the light. And I'm going to drag that color over into the light side of things too. Okay, now as the mountain faces the sun again, as it tilts upward, I'm going to make the edge of it a little bit lighter. And blend back into the darkness. And as I come down, again, it's going to get darker. Okay, this is your reminder to, if you uh, feel like you are picking up paint instead of putting it down, let that whole area dry. Just leave that space alone and come back to it later. I run into this almost every painting and it's just so much better just to come back. Now, painting acrylic on paper, it does have very, very quick dry time, but since I'm so used to that quick dry time, sometimes I'm moving too quickly. And so I just try to find something else to do, which there's always something else to do, so it's fine. I'm gonna leave this background mountain. I still think it needs work. It still needs a little bit of dimension. I like some of the variability here, but I'm gonna leave it alone for now. And I'm going to move on to the foreground grass, which has some shadow and some light. 
I think I can get away with uh, using the filbert here. some pretty deep shadows happening on the left hand side. And then back here in the trees as well. Okay, so I'm just building up some darks. And now I'm gonna put in some of the lights in the grass. That's the bright green, and then I'm going to switch over to the sage green.
Okay, that is generally what I want to have happening in the grass. I'll go back to that again later for a final round. Now, I think that the filbert brush has come to the, an end as far as its usefulness. We don't need any more soft edges. Now, I'm gonna address that background mountain. So I like the lights here. So I'm going to add more of those towards the top and on the sun side. I'm remembering that the way I mixed this color with, with cerulean blue and just a touch of the burnt sienna. And then I want it to be a lot lighter. Okay, that looks like that'll do it. I'm using the flat brush now and I'm just going right along the mountain top. On the sun side edges. Now I have a slightly darker version that I'm going to use on the away side of the mountains with similar brush strokes. add a touch of yellow to that light color. And this is where I'm going to make those little light areas. There's parts of the mountain that are being hit by the light a little bit differently. Just adding some subtle background interest. Alright, that's looking a lot better. Now I'm going to touch up the clouds. Just add a, another layer, a really thick layer of titanium white to a couple spots, not the whole thing. Just the centers. adding some little wispies outside of the main cloud area as well. Oh, 
All right. I think it looks good. Now we can paint in some light trees and then come forward from there. So we're gonna use our bright green first. I'm gonna hit some of the sun side parts of the trees and then some of the background trees as well. Even some of these dark trees have a little bit of lightness on their sun side. I added a little bit of titanium white and yellow just to make this color stand out just a bit more from that background mountain. This little tree in the front here is catching quite a bit of light. It's one of the brighter trees. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow to that one. and a little bit of that yellow to the sun side. I'm adding it a little bit here and there on some of that medium green foliage on the left trees. Now these guys are a little bit more in the medium, the medium tone. Okay, now darker. I'm using the flat brush and I'm gonna go vertical with the edge. Make a line all the way up to the top of the tree and then take the very edge of that brush and zigzag your way down for these pine trees. And I'm gonna let the bottom of the pine tree get real big.
Now as I'm coming down the tree that's going to border the light, that is going to be our highest contrast point. So just be really mindful of the shapes you're making here because those are going to be the main focal point here and on the other side as well. We'll make that real dark.
Okay, so now on the sun side of some of these darker trees, I am bringing some highlights down in between the trees. Just some brightly lit areas that you can see between branches. Not everywhere, just here and there. Adding some texture and dimension to the different layers of trees. Actually feel like this one would be a lot lighter so I'm gonna lighten it up it's gonna be a little tricky but I think it's gonna be worth it All right, I'm gonna to touch up the little light tree. Cause so that's our focal point and I think it needs a little bit more punch. So I'm gonna take some white and cadmium yellow. I have a little bit of green left on my brush and I'm just gonna make this uh, shape just a bit dramatic, more dramatic, a little bit bigger. still using just the flat brush and I'm using the corners when I need to have a small tiny shape
gonna add a couple more of these highlights to the neighboring trees that are in the lighter side of things. Now I still have that light white green color on my brush. I'm going to bring that down into the grass. Using brush strokes that are going to give me some little, little dainty lines, grass type lines. It's going to give us some texture. And this is distant grass too. As it comes into the foreground, I'm going to change the brush angle again to give us some bigger, more dramatic brush shapes. All right, I'm using that sage to give this area a little bit of texture and dimension, kind of giving us a barrier between the bright, bright grass and something that might be a little bit darker. Looks like there's some different varieties of grass in this field as well. There's a little bit of a foreground tree, but it's a little, little bay bay tree. So I'm going to pick up a medium green. Start with a medium green. I might highlight the edge. And that's some of the shadowed grass coming away from that guy. There's some highlights and then we'll bring some shadows over. This grass in front of these trees is all dark, all completely shrouded in shadow. I'm going to bring some of that up over the light. And then that same color, I'm going to bring it down into this lighter green. Just keeping, keeping those grass shapes real small way back there. Real small and vague. When we're getting up into this stuff though, that's going to be much bigger. That's, that's our direct foreground.
There's some vague front forest details there. Just to give that some more texture. It's a little bit extra highlight for a baby tree. Okay, great. So now foreground grasses. Gonna start with the sagey green. And I have the flat brush on its side now, on the sharp side. And it's gonna bring it up from the very, very foreground. Okay, and now I'm going to bring up some darker grasses. I'm going to use both the wide part of the brush and then also the skinny part. Okay, so now I can tell you what bothers me right now, and it's that I feel like that background mountain is a little, almost like, comic booky. Like it needs more texture. Like I'm okay with just about everything else happening. Maybe a little bit more bright grass here the base of that tree because that's getting a lot of light. Actually, gonna give that tree some low lights on the away side to give it a little bit of texture. It's not so blown out.
just playing around with those shapes until I like them. That seems to be good. That's much better. I'm happy with the foreground. I'm happy with the midground now. I'm happy with the tree blending and the lights coming into the trees. Yeah, it's just the background mountain. And I think what I can do is add some more texture to it using the flat brush. So I'm gonna use pretty transparent paint to achieve this. And it's gonna be light, very, very light. And I'm gonna start with the parts of the mountain that face the sun. I'm just gonna cut in. I'm not going to worry too much about overlapping anything weird onto the clouds. I can just easily put white right over them. I think also that real hard line kind of takes you off of the painting, so I'm going to definitely try to smooth that out. Do not need that mountain taking you anywhere, really. Okay, now I'm gonna see if I can clean up those clouds. I'm gonna give them out a little bit more shape while I'm doing this too.
Okay, that's a lot better. A lot better. I just need to touch up some trees that I kind of went right over for the sake of a blend, which is fine. It wasn't too bad. My God, that is much better. Much, much better. I'm going to use this dramatically lighter cloud, um, not cloud, mountain color to come down in between some of these trees. Okay, I added a little bit of cerulean blue on that mountain to give it a little bit of artistic style. And pushing it back even further in kind of the shadows of the mountain. I think that giving it more brush strokes and um, just more dramatic faces of the mountain makes it look a lot less blobby and cartoony. That was definitely a mistake. But the reference photo sometimes doesn't make things easy for you. I'm looking at it in the photo and I'm like, yeah, that kind of looks blobby and cartoony, but you don't realize that until you translate it into painting, that it's like, oh, that doesn't work the same in paint. In photography, you're definitely convinced it's real, but in painting, um, you, you might have to make some adjustments. So. That is definitely uh, something that came up in this one, and I'm kind of glad it did, because that was uh, some some learning and some adjusting to do on the fly, which is good. Also, in the another thing in the reference photo that's different than what we painted, the mountain line came was not so much of the painting, but I wanted to try something a little bit different. So that's another stepping stone in our painting journey. I hope you enjoyed this painting process video and until next time, happy painting!